My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. Arguably Florida's most commonly encountered snake is the Black Racer. This often lizard-consuming snake can be seen in just about every one of Florida's habitats. It's a fierce predator that is difficult to catch. But it's not the only snake in Florida that fills the ecological niche of being quick and speedy. It's got competition, their primary competitor being this. This is the Eastern Coach Whip, Florida's fastest snake. An average adult dwarfs any racer that it may stand against. Unlike the Black Racer, suitable habitat for finding one is usually restricted to sandier regions, making them much less common, especially knowing these sandier regions are being replaced by agriculture. So not only is finding one uneasy, but the one chance you have of catching one assuming you're lucky enough to see one is slim, as they can escape from predators in the blink of an eye. Holy crap! <laughs> this means I need to be faster than Florida's fastest snake. I did see one of these last year very briefly. I was in these very sand hills exactly one year ago from this, and saw my first eastern coach whip retreat into a burrow before I could catch it. And for a year, that was the only one I'd ever seen. So my determination this time was higher than ever, because if this was going to be anything like last year, I only have one shot. As I walked through the sand hills, I would slow down and be as stealthy and unnoticeable as possible any time I approached a burrow that they could be crawling in or out of. Yet it was just as I was walking past a tree that my opportunity revealed itself, and I took it. I just did it. Oh. Hi. Hi. Oh my god. Oh yeah, give me a second. Give me a second, buddy. Before you strike at me, I just need to process how much I love you. Oh my god. That is not a small snake. <laughs> that is such a cool snake. <laughs> if I'm slow, so should he. Don't do it. Ow! And here we have the Eastern Coach Whip, one of the longest snakes that you can find here in Florida, period. They are known to get upwards of about seven to eight feet long, believe it or not. They are incredibly long and pretty large snakes overall. Coach Whips overall get their name because they, in general, look like a whip. And if you ask me, the average snake looks like a whip anyway. So what is it about Coach Whips that give them the name Whip Snake? I think the biggest part of it is this shaded pattern on each and every scale near the tail that almost looks like the weavings of a whip. And that may be where that name comes from. The lizards around here that these snakes often like to go after are really small compared to the size of this snake. So how does this snake get this big by just eating those lizards? And the truth is, a lot of racing snakes like black racers and coach whips when they're young will go after those lizards, but eventually they get to a size where they are big enough to eat snakes. And once they get to that size, they start growing pretty rapidly. It's almost like when you keep a snake and you switch it from feeding it mice to feeding it rats. It starts to grow a lot more quickly because rats are more nutrient and they're much larger. Um, and they have more fat content to them. So once they start eating snakes, they start getting pretty darn big. Uh, a snake makes a really, really good meal for a snake. And this snake easily is large enough to be eating other snakes. And I'm sure it definitely has. And these guys, uh, kind of like king snakes, will go after venomous snakes as well. I am sure this snake would be happy to eat a baby diamondback rattlesnake. It would eat a pygmy rattlesnake. It'd probably eat coral snakes. Anything they can fit in their mouth that's usually of a reptilian kind. However, I'm sure they wouldn't be too opposed to eating rodents as well. Now, these guys also do not really kill by constriction. They mostly kill by just brute force. They have a very impressive jaw pressure. I found out firsthand just how extreme their jaw pressure is. If these guys are tackling down a snake, they're usually going to resort to biting and just crunching down as hard as they can and then probably wiggling it back and forth kind of like a dog so when this snake like bit my pant leg it started wiggling back and forth i'm thinking there's a chance that these snakes would use this wiggling motion after biting something to help kill its prey 
Um, I can't say this for sure because I haven't heard any sources that claim this. So of course, as a defense, like most other snakes like this, uh, these guys will immediately resort to biting and wiggling their tail really, really quickly. But another thing that coach whips are known for, especially Eastern coach whips, are known for doing when they get caught uh, as a defense that is quite different is playing dead. Not a lot of snakes out there play dead. Obviously, hog noses do it, ring neck snakes do it. And coach whips are like one of the only truly large snakes in the United States that are known for playing dead. And as soon as I... I uh, grabbed the snake behind the head just to keep myself from getting bit more and more. Uh, it very quickly went limp and it made me a little scared because I didn't want to, I was a little worried that I had hurt the snake, but the snake is completely fine. It has shown me very well that it is not harmed at all. And these guys play pretty much almost the exact same role in this ecosystem as the black racer, which is a much more common racing snake that you find around here. Its head is similar to a black racer and it's not completely black. It's it's like a very, very dark brown. However, the neck is almost just jet black. And then of course it slowly fades into the tannish coloration that makes it really, really pretty. And not all Eastern coach whips have a black head either. Despite that these guys and racers are closely related. They are in different genera. Um, racers are in the genus Colubra. These guys are in the genus Mastacophis. So they're considered a type of whip snake. When it comes to finding whip snakes back home, they're usually really fast and really quiet. However, there's a lot of leaf litter on the ground over here, not so much in the middle of the desert. So when these snakes make a break for it, it makes a lot of noise and they're pretty easy to notice uh, and then try to catch, which is, which is nice. And there's many different types of coach whips you can find around the United States and Mexico, including the one that I actually have already made a video about about called the Red Racer down in Southern Utah. And those look obviously much, much different from this. It was much smaller. Whereas these guys have this just kind of beautiful tannish color that blends in really, really well with the pine savanna that they are often found in. Now, do these snakes make good pets? And the answer is absolutely not. Feeding them is gonna be very difficult. Keeping a large enough enclosure for them to satisfy their needs is going to be almost impossible unless you're willing to dedicate an incredible amount of space and time and energy and resources just to make something that's gonna probably only be mediocre. So if you see one of these snakes in the wild, definitely do not try to keep it as a pet. At this time of year, it's pretty early in the spring. Um, however, these snakes can be found almost any time of year down here in North Florida. So as long as it's a sunny day, these snakes will be out and on the move. And they can be found in pretty warm temperatures as well. Definitely more heat tolerant than other snakes. And lastly, the snake, in terms of danger, is a completely harmless snake, despite the fact that they'll try to bite if you catch one. They are a completely non-venomous, completely harmless snake, nothing you need to worry about if you see one or catch one. So thank you so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the Eastern Coach Whip. I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. Words can't express the gratitude I felt for having a hands-on interaction with this snake. It was easily the longest snake I'd ever seen in the wild, and it was a greater experience than I ever imagined it would be. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like, and if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe. Uh, so when this snake like bit my pant leg, it started absolutely just, uh, it's, it started wiggling back and forth, just trying to rip my pants off almost. And I'm thinking, that doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs>